smile and make the sun rise. You make it shine, but I can see that you don't realize, and that's what made me fall in love. 'Cause you got the fire inside you, baby. My heart beats fast. It's amazing all the time. You are the only thing I need in life. Oh, I want you. Can you see? I want you. I believe 'cause I want you here with me. I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna go crazy for love. Morning. It's um, so I recently I changed kind of my my microphone position, and so now it used to be on the table, and now it's like hanging. And just two seconds before I go on live, I forget that I need to move my、uh, microphone. <laughs> right, it's one of those things that you just kind of figure out as you go. <laughs> And today I am definitely figuring out things as I go because、um, today is actually、uh, lunar lunar Chinese New Year Chinese lunar New Year's Eve. Yeah, you, you it's one of those. <laughs> today is New Year's Eve、uh, according to the lunar calendar. And typically, hi Carrie.、Uh, typically, my grandma used to say that if you are working. During those New Year period, that means that、um, you're going to be working for the whole entire year. So it is custom and tradition that I take a couple of days off in and not be work, not be at work. Which fi- I find it very difficult because everybody else celebrated、uh, New Year's already, right? January first is on New Year, and so when you celebrate Lunar Year, it's kind of like in the middle. Of the calendar calendar system, and it's just kind of weird.、Um, everybody else would be working on Monday, and here I am. I'm doing my live、um, just because I want to be consistent.、Um, so today we're going to talk about the three ways of having that freedom in your business, and this is a conversation that I have planned out last last week. Yeah, last week. Um, because I notice a lot of us, including myself, we do a lot of doing. We do things. We produce a lot of、uh, content. We write. We create a lot of things.、Um, but then there's some of us who are actually introverted. So if you're joining me live today, give me a heart. Put it. Let me know that you are watching this live. And if you are watching this as a replay, no worries. Just drop me a blue heart. And let me know that you're following along. It's been some time, <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're gonna talk about the three ways that you can have the freedom in your business,、um, especially when it comes to content creation, which I will talk about、um, towards the end because my content creation process pretty much takes a big chunk of my life,、uh, a big chunk of what I do. Um, and I'm passionate about it, so I'm totally okay with it. It's something that I enjoy, something that I love.、Um, so if you were to tell me,、um, ask me to do content creation like all day long, I'm happy to do that. I, I'm like all for it. <laughs> But that's just me, right? So for you, it, you may be passionate about something else, like coaching.、Um, I know, I know, going into coaching, I'm, I, I enjoy talking to clients and watching them thrive. But there's also all these mundane business work that you would have to、uh, put in the time for, and those include your paperwork. Those includes、um, gathering your tax file, and right now it's tax season, right? So do you do bookkeeping? And if you are like me, someone who、um, you know started out a business as a solopreneur, you probably don't have any team yet. So there's nobody. You're you're by yourself. You're one woman doing all the things. And there's a difference between the introverted and in,、uh, extroverted or ambivert, because、um, we do things very differently. So for someone who、um, is 
really on top of things, very organized to come off and say, oh, this is easy. You just do X, Y, and Z. It may seem a little hard to digest, right? Because no matter how how organized we're trying to be, we're still having that resistance in terms of I, I'm just I just can't be organized. I'm messy. I'm a messy person. My my drawer is messy. Okay, my corner is messy. <laughs> I just don't see it. I'm just good at hiding it. Um, so sometimes messy is good. Messy it just means that it's you. Um, so three way three way to have the freedom in your coaching business. I cannot tell you enough how automation changes a lot of、uh, the way that I do business as a solopreneur.、Um, I obviously don't have the time to、uh, reach out to every single person, which is why I automate my email email marketing. Right.、Um, Anytime I need to reach out to the audience,、uh, someone who is just subscriber, they're not really, they're not really sure if working with me is something that they want or they just want to stay on the list because there's something that's valuable that they can walk away with just from reading the newsletter. Then that's how I stay in in touch with them.、Um, so automation actually、um, helped me a lot. And if you are not using automation, automation I means like programs like your cell phone, right? Cell phone that has a, a note. There's a section in note. You can take out your notes, and if you were to take it to the next level, you can use something like Notion, Trello board, or any of the project management tool that allows you to organize your thoughts and your tasks that you need to do. I like the paper, paper and pen. So I always keep a paper and pen available to me, so I can write down,、uh, brainstorming any ideas that I may that may come up during the day or throughout the time, and then I can just jot jot it down on the piece of paper and then bring it back to my computer when I'm ready to work on maybe creating a piece of content. So this is something that、um, had come up in the past, where people said, "How do I stay visible online?" And yet, you know, because I'm introverted and I like to have my alone time, alone space,、uh, to recover and to recharge. I I get it. I told I'm totally the same way.、Uh, I'm totally the same way、uh, because a lot of time, you know, I need the. A long time in order to know what else I am sharing. So the first number one first way of how to have the freedom in your coaching business is actually plan ahead using some tools, right? So、uh, calendar that I talked about um, um, just now, a planner. You can brainstorm and brain dump everything on that.、Uh, this is what we call in the planner world. We call it the inbox, kind of like your email system inbox. And the inbox is there for you to dump everything onto that list that you planning to do in the future, right now, or last minute, <laughs> or earlier, ten minutes ago. It, it allows you to dump everything onto that inbox. And what do you do with that inbox list, right? So let's say you just wrote it down. Somewhere, and maybe it's on your phone too.、Um, you can go through that list and see what has been done already, and what would be the next doable thing. What would be the most important item on your list, and you start going from there, organizing what needs to be done next. So, plan ahead, right?、Um, and maybe there's that feeling right now that there's just so many things that overwhelm. I wanted to do. What is what this what what feels more supported right now? Maybe it's not doing anything. Like today, I'm not planning to do anything at all. Period, because it's New Year's Eve and、I'm, my family is coming over. There's family responsibility, and so I'm going to save my time for them for the next two days, or <laughs>、we'll、give them the priority for the next two days. So you get to decide when you want to do thing, how you want to do it, and how much. You want to do it? It's your business. It's none of anybody else's business. How much you're going to do? How fast you're going to travel? Or how little you're going to do? No one's judging you besides just you judging yourself, right? So if you're still building that online visibility, then it's okay. Just take your time and you know one tiny little step. Try it out here.、If、that doesn't work. Try another time and do the same thing repeatedly so that you get to see effect. And one thing that I will say that、um, if you are planning to try out something, something new, 
stick to it, stick to it for uh, 30 days, you know, at least at the very least 30 days, because otherwise you won't see the, the result or if you're not going to collect enough data to, to put a conclusion to it. So I always recommend if you're going to try out something new, try out 30 days and just to see where it goes. If it works great next month, we can come back and talk about you know, what had worked and how can we improve it. But if you haven't even given it a try and say, you know what, I'm going to create a post, uh, a social media posting for the next um, five days or seven days. If you haven't even taken on that task or doing it, then we don't really know what's working, what is not working. So there's nothing that, there's no data that we are collecting and there's no data that we can look at to um, refine our process on the next, next round. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So time freedom, that's one way of getting your time back and take control of your calendar. I see this so often that people, um, you know, have these uh, uh, going back and forth, right? Going back and forth. And what time, what day are you available? What day are you available? And people go back and forth a, a lot of time. Just get a free calendar calendar app or something like that so that you can eliminate some of the timing and, and communication process of which day are you available? Monday, Tuesday, and I'm available on Thursday and Friday. And so how does that work? So save yourself the trouble and use the automation for your calendar, especially your calendar, and utilize some of the apps or paper Right? Very simple, not, no app, no technology whatsoever. Just write it down. Any ideas, inspiration that you have, quotes, why saying, just write it down into your inbox and then you can go back to sort it out. Uh, financial freedom. The second way that we can talk about is the financial freedom that you create for your business. Uh, how do you create the financial freedom? Uh, one, you probably still working a full-time job like me. Or you're still working uh, somewhere, a uh, part-timer, maybe. Um, so how do you monetize the little things that you do already? Let's say you're creating a lead magnet. And this is something that I have done in the past, right? So you're creating a lead magnet. And you're creating these um, amazing worksheets that you plan on using for your client. How do you monetize that? How do you, how do you use it to your advantage? One is you can sell them. There's a lot of this uh, digital download product like planner, right? You can design a planner. You can uh, create a journal. If you love journal, then make your own journal and just make it pretty, right? Go to Canva and make it pretty. And what you can do is you can sell that for like, you know, $5, $7 and people will buy. If you have like a whole ebook of how to journal or you actually have the e uh, uh, like a collection of uh, planner, how do you how do you uh, get someone to setting their goal, like a goal planning PDF? You can totally sell that. Where do you go and sell it? You can go sell it on Etsy. Etsy, a lot of people um, sell these stuff on Etsy and it's downloadable. And the good thing about that is you can actually grab the link and share that onto your with your audience, right? Every now and then when you have a call to action, um, even though if you don't have a website, you can grab a link and, and you can monetize it by saying, hey, you know, um, it's beginning of the year and here's a goal setting worksheet. If you want to download, here's a $5 and you can download into your digital and use it on your iPad. Um, if you think about it, $5 per person, right? A uh, hundred people download, that would be $500. <laughs> so it's a little thing that just kind of add up. So think about what are some of the things that you are already doing, already creating that will generate a little bit of income for you that way. Um, even selling PDF, like people buy it. I know I, I used to buy these planners, especially if you were to tell me like there's a planner coming out. I'm all on it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that would cost me like ten, fifteen dollars to download, right? But again, you gotta multiply it. One person is ten dollars, a hundred person is a hundred dollars, uh a thousand people, that's like ten grand, right? A ten ten thousand dollar right there. <laughs> so there's one way of of start thinking about how do you generate some of the passive income on the things that you already do. 
uh, per diem job would be another option to have that uh, financial freedom. Um, maybe you can develop a full-time job, right? A full-time work. So maybe a per diem somewhere um, that they need you, they call you, are you available? If you are, great, you know, you get paid by, by uh, just showing up. So that's one way of doing it. And the other thing would be part-time job. Part-time job is you putting a couple of hours in, in, their, in their work and they pay you for a part-timer employee. So there's ways to create your financial freedom. And the last thing that you want is to be stuck in, your, um, the, in the financial situation or in the time that you have. We all, we all have equal amount of time. Right, you and I, we're sitting here, we all have equal amount of time, but the time is limited because we have different responsibilities. So perhaps you, your time is need, much needed in taking care of someone in the house or um, taking kids, going back and forth, driving your kids to school. So your time is very limited compared to my time where I don't have a kid. And so time is really relative in the sense that the responsibilities that we have. But, you know, if you to think about time in a quantitative state, right, we all have 24 hours. So what, what are some of the areas that you might be able to, like, spend five minutes or 10 minutes doing something that's quick and simple, like sending someone a text message or uh, reaching out to um, a client, a possible client who maybe you can you can start a uh, conversation with. So something like that, very small and, and would take would not take a whole lot of time and doesn't require a whole lot of energy. Maybe that would be something that you, you'll be able to do, right? So do what you can with the time that you have without listening to anybody else. Like I can tell you how I do my time, but that's not relevant to you because I don't have kids. I don't have kids. I have a fur baby, but I don't have kids. And kids takes a lot of responsibility. So give yourself the permission to relax and use time as you seem appropriate. All right, content creation. So content freedom is one of the big ones, and which is why I save it to the last. You save the best for the last, right? Um, so I save it for the last because content creation, a lot of people think of it as, oh, I need to sit down. I need to start creating things. I need to start writing. I need to post, and I need to show up on, online in order to be visible. So there's a lot of things that's going through your head the moment that you hear content creation. So, so here, here's a myth, and, and maybe you can try it out this week, is that content creation can happen everywhere and, and coming from all sources, right? So again, you know, I like to do have a, like a notepad or a paper that, that's available for me so I can just write down things. Or a lot of time I just use my phone. So I, have, I use this um, project management tool, it's called Notion. I used to use Trello, but you know, once you, your content get become mass, ma ma massive, it, it's really hard for me to organize everything on Trello and it looks so confusing. So I have migrated to Notion which I'm loving it. And I can share screen with you to see, to show you how it looks like and how I manage my, my content. Now, the way that I do, I do the content, have the content freedom is I'm not on computer 100, like 24 seven all the time. I only use it when I need it. And most of the time I just do things, write down things on my, on my, on my cell phone. So it, it is available on both desktop as well as your mobile device. And it's really just like a simple uh, note app on your phone. So if you use iPhone, there's a note uh, function that's on your phone that's already available for you. Um, if you don't, if you don't have Apple, you can use Android. Android has a similar uh, similar uh, app function that will allow you to take notes. If you write paper and pen, great, use paper and pen. And right now, there's a lot of people talking about Remarkable. Uh, basically, it's just a writing pad and kind of similar to iPad, uh, except it's a light, lighter thing and it feels like you're writing on a piece of paper and you can store that. But no matter what tool you use, it's what finding the one that works best for you, right? There's all these tools that's available for you, but you have you gotta find the one that is best. Uh, easy, affordable, 
that's easy to navigate and you can you can pick up and using it without any problem, which is why I like paper and pen. So I spent a lot of money on buying all these um, all these notebooks because <laughs> I like paper and pen. OK, but I do find Notion very helpful because I have the template. I use the template to organize all my calendar, all my all my uh, event that's happening, uh, all the tracking that I need to track, and all my content creation. Content creation happens everywhere, every single minute. So as a coach, I know there's a lot of things that, you know, perhaps things that happen in life that I can circle it back and bring it back, always bring it back to the topic that I'm passionate about. So, so one of the, uh, the three, my top three values that when I first started and, and still true um, are the authenticity, bravery, and connection. Those are important to me. So anytime that I can, I can uh, have the authenticity, have the bravery and have the connection that I can make. I'm like off for it, right? It, it makes me, it makes me happy and makes me like the day go by so so much easier um but there's life that life event that happens that i can always bring it back to talk about authenticity when when something happened and you don't talk about it or you're struggling but you're kind of refusing it and putting it to the side we can talk about authenticity and how authenticity show up in that situation right we can also talk about how bravery shows up in that situation so any life event that happened you can always bring it back and circle it back to the values that you have in life and which is why a lot of time when i work with clients we go through and talk about the value because when you understand your value everything that you talk about all the creation all the contents that you put out there will come back full circle in showing demonstrating the value that you have in life and when you start coming out from that approach of what are my values then the people who's reading your post there's no confusion whatsoever about what is it exactly you're sharing right so it's when i'm talking about authenticity it's always going to circle back people will be clear that oh this is authentic authentic authenticity right there's a value that shows up along this post that speak to that specific topic so that's how i like to think of things by topics and categories i'm a very um like I book by book kind of person, regular, you know, if I'm going straight, I'm going straight. There's no turning, no shortcuts whatsoever. So I'm pretty bite the book. So I like the idea of topics, categories. And when I think about the topic, what is it that, that's important for people to hear about? What do I want to share, right? So immediately I can already see myself even before I go to the computer and start writing. There's an idea of what I want to talk about. What are some of the key takeaway? What is important for my audience to know? So those are the things I jot down really quickly in my either my note app or my Notion, my content creation app. What do I jot down? I'm not writing the whole entire paragraph. I'm just taking down the key bullet points of that particular issues or, or uh, experience that I'm going through, and here are the bullet point, A, B, and C. Now, when I do have time, uh, typically it's on a Sunday, I will come back, I will bring my dream, sit in front of the computer, and I will knock out a whole bunch of uh, uh, topics that I have already banked in my content library. So I'm gonna show you how I organize that. Um, just be, be aware that this is very extensive, and there's a lot of information on this page. So don't get overwhelmed because I didn't start out this way. I started out with a clean slate, nothing on that, on that content calendar, right? But as you go, you slowly build on each. And so you can keep repeating the process and system. And once you get used to that system, it's like a second nature. You wake up in the morning, oh, there's a topic that I want to talk about, how to take some time off because you're the boss and you get to call the shop. If you don't want to work, don't work. <laughs> Simple as that, right? Uh, no one can tell you otherwise. So I'm not going to work for the next two days. And Nobody can make me. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And I'm going to share my screen so you can see how I organize my topics and my things. All right. So this is Notion. 
Um, so this, for example, today, this is a sample page because I don't want to overwhelm you. But basically, whenever I have something that's scheduled, it's a topic. It's a simple topic. So I can come back here and let's say next week I want to talk about um, what should we talk about? I mean, another live, live Q&A. Let's do another live Q&A because next week we have the Brave Your Brand Challenge and I would like to talk about some Q&A regarding the challenge. All right, so it's gonna be a live Q&A and the category would be something about visibility strategy and the purpose is educational. That's how I, that's how my brain thinks. And that's all I'm doing. Just write down the topic, write down the topic that you would like to discuss, nothing more. And you can do this probably while sitting, sitting down watching TV. And oh, you know, Ted Lasso. There is a lesson from Ted Lasso I, I would like to talk about or discuss. Put that onto a notepad or put that onto a uh, project management uh, uh, app. And there you go. That's your next topic. Now, maybe, maybe, um, maybe you decided, well, next week, I don't want to do a live Q&A. Next week, maybe I want to talk about uh, spring cleaning. Why, what do you need to, what do you need to let go this year? Okay, all right. So that's another topic that I want to talk about. And there you go. That's in my content library. So I get a whole list of these different topics that's related to my niche, that's related to the topic I'm focusing on, and they stay here. And when I need to have an idea to sit down and plan out or write something, I come to my content library and I can see, okay, I didn't talk about that topic yet. Let me talk about that topic, right? So you keep having a list, a running list of um, ideas and things that you can share with your audience. And you're constantly, um, you're not constantly reproducing it. You're not constantly producing it. You're actually just keeping track of all the idea that show up. So I do have a content library that is pretty massive, right? Um, <laughs> we're gonna do, here's the calendar. And it's pretty massive because I have every single one listed as the topic. Here is the list. That's exactly what I did, right? I, I come in here, how do you keep the momentum during the holiday? I think those of you who, who have read that article that was published on my blog, right? And I can also turn that into an Instagram post, but that this is where it came from. I would just come in here, how do you keep the momentum during the holiday season? That was it, that was just one topic. And once I have that topic, I come in here and I start writing, not, no judgment whatsoever. I'm just dumping all my ideas on here, you know, my bullet points, what are the three important things I want the people to know about. And then you can go back and do the editing and fix it if you want. But if not, then it's right here and you can just copy and paste whenever you like it. Now this one got scheduled on December 27th. So if I were to go to my calendar on December 27th, that's what I talked about. How do you keep the momentum um, during the holiday. So each one of these tiny little box contains an idea that I have planned for that whole entire month. Now let's say today is Monday, right? So I have this whole week already planned out. Now, if I have time, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to work on my next week. Next week is February, February Valentine. What is... What is your love language? That would be a topic that I can talk about. What is your love language with, that you share with your clients? How does your client feel your love? And that would be something interesting, right? I'll share, I'll share my, my way of showing them my love. Um, so what is your love language? And I can, I can always circle that back to the things I do, my niche, everything. But that's just a topic. I'm going to come back to it later to create what goes into that into that topic. And then so uh, day eight, so on next week on Tuesday is the Brave Your Brand car close day. So I have a post already scheduled for that. 
And then on Wednesday, you can come back here and talk about, I don't know, how to um, write a blog without a blog. Methods that you can use to write a blog, even though you don't have a blog, or maybe you don't have a website. How can you do that? <laughs> well, where can you do that, right? That would be another topic I can talk about. Uh, so as you can see, now I just created three posts and I haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> so easy, easy peasy. You gotta think about this and plan it ahead and have use some of the tools that's already available to you to keep track and so that you can, you can, you can create stuff no matter where you are and you're constantly we're constantly in a creation mode right every moment as we're creating the life experience we're also creating some inspirational ideas that we can talk about we can share and everything this is why it's it's important to really understand what is your your personal branding story because if you were to talk about all these different topics it's a lot to cover but if you were to narrow it down to specifically who you are, what is your story, and what do you what is important for people, your audience to know about you and working with you, then it, you really narrow down to a lot of um, unnecessary or going around circle topic that really doesn't pertain to anything and and it's meaningless, right? And you're not you're just confusing the audience even more by going off tangent. So stay within your land know your values, know your uh, brand stories, and going from there because content creation is fun. It's writing should be fun. And the truth is you don't have to be a writer in order to write your content. Um, it can be short, it can be uh, a drawing. There's a lot of different ways to express who you are in your business. So hopefully I'm giving you some idea of how to have that freedom. Uh, number one is to... Um, use some type of time management system for that works for yourself. Um, so for me, using the paper, pen, that really works for me. Um, I also use the notions to plan ahead. And then the second thing is to have the money, uh, the financial freedom. Financial freedom, you can, you can think of it as a couple of ways. You're probably still working, great. Um, it's still generating income, so then, uh, what really comes into important or come into play is knowing how to manage your time and, and take control over your time so that you block out certain days that you want to work towards your business. Even if it means that just a couple of hours per day or just one hour or just 30 minutes per day, that's still moving forward um, in, a, in a forward motion. Right. Um, so time blocking is so valuable. I, I think it's so valuable. It's like a game changer for me because then I can control where at what time I want to do what and stay focused on that. So financial freedom, monetize some of the things that you're already doing, like creating PDF that you want to share with your client. And the good thing about that is you can also do it as a market research at the same time. This, is this something that people will be looking for? How many people have downloaded? How many people have purchased? You know, $5, it's easy. Um, content freedom, write, write down using a planner, no app or any project management tools. Um, use your calendar. Um, Google Calendar actually has a task function that you can use, you can utilize. Even without any using any, any technology at all, you can use simply using your Google Calendar and create a task to plan your content ahead of time. So I am going to, um, I'm putting together a content cre uh, content creation workshop. I have to find the date, but there's a couple of people who have reached out to me and they wanted to content creation workshop. So I am going to offer that. So if you're interested, go ahead and type content in the comment below and I will set it up and I will let you know when um, this workshop would be. So if you'd like me to do a content creation workshop, just put that in the common content, C-O-N-T-E-N-T, -E and I will be more than happy to host a workshop. All right. Um, keep track of all your inspirations from life. Life is happening. We have a lot of things going on, you know, even outside of uh, our, our home. Um, so there's a lot of things, but think of it as your inspiration.
those are stories that you can tell later. So, you know, give yourself the permission to have the experience and be open to it and keep track. Yeah. Um, one thing I love about the content creation is that I, I get to write little stories, right? So all these life events that happened. So a couple of months ago, my dad was in the hospital because um, he had a he had a um, surgery. It's, it's a hernia repair. Um, and during that time, it's really challenging, right? Because then he's in the hospital and someone needs to go. And because of COVID, you can't go because there's no, they don't allow visitor. So there's just a lot of moving parts um, that's happening all at once. But that becomes an experience and experience become a story and story becomes something that we tell and we share. And there's always a lesson behind the story that we tell. So think about enjoying the life experience and don't be so harsh on yourself and just allow things to happen. So that is my two cents. Hopefully you are allowing yourself to have some freedom in your business. It's your business, right? You are in this for the long run. You're not just having it for like, oh, you know what? Today I'm on the clock. Tomorrow I will be off the clock. You're on the clock the whole entire time in your business. So it's okay to take a day off. You're the boss. You get to decide when you want to take a day off. And today I am going to take a day off. That would be it, ladies. So I will see you on the next Go Live. We do have a Go Live um, this Wednesday. And joining me is an amazing guest speaker who speaks on the topic of resiliency. So hopefully you'll be joining me here. And I will see you soon. Bye.